Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Yes, you read the title right. I bought the absolute cheapest, brand new, off-the-shelf AK that I could possibly find in the USA. And you know, I watch a lot of car content, and I always find myself clicking on the video where they claim to have purchased the cheapest running and driving whatever in the country, and it's kind of cool to see like what you get for spending the least amount of money possible. I dare anyone to pay what I paid for a functioning brand new production AK fully featured. Has all the furniture, has all the components, it's ready to go out of the box. This is a Pioneer Arms 556 underfolder sporter rifle with a forged trunnion, believe it or not. Kind of a weird AK from a company that uh, honestly, truth be told, is not deeply loved by the AK community. And they really do put Rodham and Oval 11 all over their boxes, but are they, you know, truly made with good quality Polish parts? Well, um, there's plenty of information out there, but not exactly, um, not exactly the same quality as FB Rodham, really not even close, but made in the same area. Let's do a quick unboxing. I'll, I'll be quick and I'll show you what the gun looks like, what we got, and then uh, I'm going to freak you out with the price. I'll include the shipping. Here we go. Piece of foam. Of course, the charging handle has blown through that foam. And then we have the gun. It is an underfolder, as you can see there. And uh, yeah, comes with this um, quality checked deal on the trigger. And it comes with a chamber flag, very tight safety. And a Pioneer Arms chamber flag. Anyway, ooh, Let's see what else we got here. Ah, uh, what is that? That is a muzzle brake in a bag. It has a slant brake on it right now. This is there, I'm sure this is like a pro mag or something, but 5.56 five, double stack mag. And the owner's manual, and again, this, this, is, this was funny. 5.56 five, only. Don't be dumb. No reloaded ammo. And then it's just your general manual, safety manual, operation manual, and then they give you a sticker, Pioneer Arms. Doesn't that look just like the primary arms logo? I've always thought that. All right, let's take a better look at it. I have taken this out of the box one time, but I didn't really want to look it over too much. I really kind of wanted to get my general first impression on camera. It's an AK, definitely shaped like an AK. Has a slant brake. Front sight post. The front sight is centered. They said this has a melanite finish online. 45 degree gas block there. 5.56 five, in the casting there. Looks like a regular gas tube, no vent holes. Everything here is AKM. We have a cleaning rod. That's good. Sight block also has 5.56 five, stamped into it there. And there's your sight leaf. Has color fill and then you have the Rodham laser engraved on that side. They're very proud of the fact that it's made in Rodham, Poland, clearly. All of those rivets are pretty flat. I know. A couple of toenails on these two rivets, but they're fully smashed. Everything looks good out back. I did want to check to see how straight all of our barrel components are. And the rear sight block is definitely a little crooked. From the shooter's perspective, this kind of floats over this way a little bit, but not a big deal. Front sight post was centered from factory. I wonder if it's zeroed. I'd be curious if it is. Gotta say, the, the stock has absolutely no rattle, no noise, no wiggle. It is tight, very tight. And you can see the F there on the trunnion, meaning it has a forged trunnion. I don't think they would lie about that, so it must be. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of cool. Let's feel. 
safety, not the tightest safety I've ever felt in the world. It's still pretty tight, could be loosened. But once you get it going, it's, it's smooth. Let's feel this. Action feels a little clunky, a little clunky. Can't get it to get stuck on the uh, hammer face. I'm sure that will loosen up and smooth up over time, but out of the box, the action's a little clunky. And then of course, the magazine that it comes with has 5.56 on the follower there. It's gonna be a little hard for you to see. Goes in smooth, very tight lockup. Yeah, definitely could be smoothened up a little bit and we can, we're definitely gonna have to loosen up that safety, but I gotta tell you, man, everything that needs to be tight is tight. I have not felt the trigger yet. Man, that rear sight is a little crooked. I have felt worse triggers, but it's nothing to write home about, but I have definitely felt a hell of a lot worse triggers. Uh, it's not terrible. So you're probably wondering what I paid for this. Now that you know, it comes with everything you see here, fully featured. Uh, obviously it doesn't have an optic rail because it is an underfolder. I don't know of any underfolders that do have the optic rail because it would hit it. So mounting an optic might be a, a little difficult, but they have fixed stock models available. If, uh, if you can find one, I absolutely could not for the life of me find the fixed stock 556 Sporter, but I figured never ever had an underfolder on the channel, maybe one, but extremely rare thing to have on this channel, so had to do it. I got all of this shipped for $579. I know you're not gonna believe me, so blam. There's a screenshot of the receipt. Now, truth be told, I did have a discount code. Uh, Again, the people at Pioneer have no idea who I am. I don't know anyone at Pioneer. They have no idea that I bought this with my own money. They have no idea that this video is happening. This was me. This was me really genuinely curious about what's the cheapest AK money can buy. So I got on Facebook, saw that I had a poll out there, uh, kind of asking people what AK they wanted to see on the channel. And he saw a lot of people wanted to see the Pioneer Arms 556 because they thought surely it had to be a dumpster fire because they are selling these things so cheap. He reached out to me and said, hey, I know these things are always out of stock. I found one in stock and I have a discount code. You can see if it still works. This is just a normal dude that reached out. He bought one, sent me pictures of his and he says, man, it looks okay. I said, screw it. So I went on the website, bought it, used that discount code and it knocked well over a hundred dollars off. I have no idea how Pioneer Arms and the gun shop that sold this thing made any money on this deal at that price. I mean, you got to figure two entities had to make money off $579. It's just crazy. So going back to Pioneer Arms as a company, um, I think a lot of people, the internet, for instance, Reddit, Facebook, Instagram, pretty much anywhere I posted about this gun, I would say 90% of the comments were like, I'll pray for you, bro. 10% of people said, yeah, I bought one and it was actually okay. So the, the overwhelming majority of people have, and I hate saying it because I'm indifferent. It, it, Pioneer Arms, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I don't lose, lose sleep at night that people buy their guns. And I don't care if people buy them and they work or they don't work. I've never really thought about it much. But it definitely seems that most of the internet has absolutely no love for Pioneer Arms and would absolutely tell you to avoid anything that they make. I mean, you should have seen some of the messages I got when I just showed a picture of the box. Uh, it like infuriated some people that I bought this. Anyway, there's absolutely no agenda for me trying to convince you to buy one of these. It's just curiosity. I mean, what do I have invested in this? 570 bucks. Getting into like Sam 5 territory, you can buy like three and a half of these guns for what one of those guns costs. So just to put that into perspective and then think about this. At this price, if you were to shoot a thousand rounds of brass case ammo through this gun, you have basically shot enough ammo to equal the value of the gun within a thousand rounds. That's how freaking cheap this is. And it is unbelievable in January of 2024 that an AK can be sold at this price and be good. We haven't figured that out yet. So uh, I don't know, man. 
I don't know if I'm rooting for it or if I kind of want to see if all the rumors are true because everyone told me that the firing pin was going to break, it was going to lose his face, something bad was going to happen because people have bought these and had bad interactions. And a big reason why I bought this gun, my good buddy Brad over at M26 Lemon Grenade has some awesome videos about his 5.56 Pioneer Arms and uh, he's had some good and he's had a lot of bad but with some minor fixes, he's actually made his a pretty reliable gun. And the way he has it kitted out, it looks pretty cool. And he has like a functioning AK that I think he got his for even like $500, which is insane. So I've gone ahead and taken the liberty to uh, change a few things out on this gun. And you know what I say, a good set of wood can really make an ugly AK cool. And that's exactly what we've done. We've put the muzzle brake that came included with the box on the gun. You can see there, a little two-chamber break. Pretty cool. Some surplus wood. It's a Russian lower and I believe in a Romanian upper, so they definitely don't match, but there you go. And a uh, Bulgarian, kind of like a salmon-colored 74 grip on there, just to break up the color and add a bit more orange and woodiness to it. And I gotta tell you, completely changed the look of the gun. And uh, we got our little blue force gear AK sling on there. The first thing that I found to be a little alarming was the thread pitch on the barrel. Obviously it's a 14 by one left hand, but the very first time I took it off to take the original slant brake off to put this brake on that came with it, it was very gritty to the point where I was a little nervous. It was tight the whole way coming off, and this, was, this one was very tight the whole way going on. Uh, it's perfectly fine now, so I think it's just maybe some coating that was on the original two muzzle devices, but. Man, that was a little alarming to say the least how tight and gritty those threads were, but right now they feel fine. Another thing that was pretty crazy was the grip screw. And I am telling you, I thought I was going to shred this grip screw. It was so tight. Anyone that's ever changed out an AK grip screw, you know that it's a very long threaded, you know, bolt that you have to thread in for quite some time and thread out for quite some time. Well, this one, Every bit, and you, all you have is a, a flathead screwdriver, every bit of taking that screw out was extremely difficult, very, very tight to the point where I thought I was going to either round the head of the screw off or <laughs> like break the tip of my screwdriver. It was pretty bad and it felt even worse going back in. So I got it out, put the new grip back in and I went to tighten the new screw. And I'm telling you, the second it caught threads, I thought I, I thought I cross-threaded it. Same, kind of the same feeling I had with the muzzle device at first. Was not cross-threaded. It fought me the entire way in. I'm talking like a half inch of threads all the freaking way to the point where, where I got it to where I maybe needed like another eighth of an inch to close the gap and really tighten it. I was holding this thing between my legs and giving the screwdriver everything I could just to get the grip tight. And I almost thought it was gonna seize up halfway through. So that was a little alarming. I wanna say it has to do with possibly the way they coat all these parts, because the threads up front had the same grit, and this obviously has some crazy grit to it. It's probably just what they're coating it with. The other thing that was um, very difficult and a little odd that it was so hard was the actual lever on your sight block that puts tension on your gas tube. This lever here, now we've all seen the trick where you can actually take the carrier and that little paddle right there is actually thin enough to fit into your carrier and you can actually use your bolt carrier to get leverage and flip this up. Some AKs you can do it by hand. This one, it is not happening by hand whatsoever. It's a little gouged up. It actually took a set of channel locks gripping this and putting a ton of effort to finally get that lever to release. Never in my life have I felt a lever that puts so much tension into a gas tube to where you had to use channel locks and put a lot of ass behind it to move. That was pretty crazy, but you know, other than that, the gun came apart fine. It was pretty easy. And of course, the safety was extremely tight, so we loosened it up. And if you can see here, knife hand, very simple, has a nice click when it falls into place was not that way out of the box. Had to totally break the grip and get it to go off and on safe. Uh, we tuned it and we just did the typical thing where you flip it up with your dust cover off and bend it. 
This one took a, a bit more than I'm used to. I really had to go back and forth and back and forth and really find the spot that needed to be bent to where it wouldn't be too loose or too tight, just right. But not a big deal. It took five, 10 minutes tops of tuning and we got it done and it's actually a very good feeling safety now. Now I did say when I first took it out of the box that the action had a little bit of grit. And you know, I have really been cycling this gun and doing dry fires and reloads for like a full 24 hours now to the point where Rachel is like going in the bedroom and closing the door so she doesn't have to listen to it anymore. And I gotta tell you, the action feels better. Um, I just think whatever they're coating this thing is making all of the threads kind of a son of a bitch. And it seems like it kind of roughed up the action, but with a little bit of use, totally went away and the action is smooth. I have opened and closed this stock at least a hundred times <laughs> in a day, just running around the house, shooting it from the hip, dry firing from the hip. And uh, dude, I gotta tell you, it kind of lit a fire and got me excited about an underfolder because I've never personally owned one. I've shot underfolders that my friends have owned, but I've never really spent a ton of time with them. And uh, still hate the way it feels when you shoulder it, but it's totally doable. I can totally work with it. In the next video, if you don't see it in this video, we are gonna shoot this. Won't be able to film that for about another week. So what I do wanna do right now is show you the one thing that was the biggest concern when I pulled this 579 gun out of the box, took the mag out for the first time, is this magwell. This has to be the tightest magwell I think I've ever felt on an AK. Like there is no room for error when you're doing mag changes because it is so damn tight. You have to be perfect going in and out. Other YouTube channels that I've seen that have these guns um, have recommended the Polish Barrel mag, which I have a ton of, which I was excited to hear that this is a viable option. Beautiful. So I will say the first time I have three brand new, never inserted Polish Barrel mags and got home, put them in and they almost didn't fit. And I panicked. I'm like, dude, what, what freaking mags am I gonna use? These are like the thinnest 556 five, mags one can buy. How does it not work? Couple of clicks, smoothed up. It just sort of had to like, you know, like self tune the mag. And sure enough, every Polish Barrel mag I have now, <laughs> for the most part, <laughs> leave that part in, goes in, comes out, not, not super buttery smooth, but good enough. The other mag everyone is buying right now are the WBP mags. Same, same, very, very tight, but after a few wiggles in and out, a couple of dry fire reloads, they really start to fit well, as is the case for all of the ones that I have tried, so that's good. This was the one I was mostly curious about because I have like probably 50 of the Circle 10 Bulgarian mags. And I think a lot of us have a ton of these mags on hand. You would think this wouldn't work because it's kind of a chubby mag and it, it is extremely tight, but it does lock in. And it doesn't seem to hold up. So that's kind of exciting. I think after some use, these will actually be pretty good options, but we'll find out when we actually go shoot it. Just for shits and gigs, we have the translucent Circle 10. Don't buy these, they all break, but I have one. Actually fits better than the black mag. Kind of cool. And this is interesting. Uh, 545 mag, if you're interested in using like pod arms followers, I have not found them to be 100% reliable, but they're like 90% reliable. But if you want to get your pod arms follower on and run a Bakelite, they probably fit the best. Tr real deal, surplus 74 mags fit the best in this thing from what I have found. Doesn't matter if it's plum, Bakelite, whatever. Perfect fitment. Just wish they were 5.56. Five, this was a little disappointing because this is definitely the cheapest out of all of these, uh, price-wise, the AC Unity mag. And what's crazy is this seems to be the mag that works with like all the different 5.56 AKs that I have tried, but it takes a ton of force to get it in. Uh, it's in there, it clicked. And I've noticed the more and more that I force it in there, the easier it's getting. Not like those, those it took a few times in and out and it worked in relatively quick. quick. And then coming out, but I feel like these can be made to work might just need a little bit of filing. And these are like $15. And they've always been very reliable for me if you can get them to lock in. So that's super cool. Ah, it's in there. 
But, you know, out of all of them, something about the Barrel Mag, I just think looks kind of right. With some surplus wood, a not black grip, and the underfolder, <laughs> it's kind of a vibe. I'll cover up the logo, and then you don't know. From a distance, looks like a really cool 5.56 underfolder. I am fully ready to go start shooting this thing. So right off the bat, I guess to close out this video, all I can say is it is a very good looking gun. From the outside looking in, the finish is great. It's fairly straight, although that rear sight block is a little off, but uh, it's straight enough. And it does look good when you change out the furniture. So the looks department, they have totally nailed it in my opinion. The underfolder works perfectly fine. Very solid lockup. I found some mags that seem to work very well. I'm happy with the trigger, and over time, the action has slicked up even more. So I'm breaking through whatever that finish is that they're using, the melanite finish, which I'm assuming that's what's adding so much grit to the grip screw and the barrel threads. But uh, the more I'm taking parts off and putting them back on and playing with the action, it has slightly gotten better over time, so really no complaints there anymore. So next time we'll catch you guys at the range, I'm bringing hundreds of rounds with me, so we will see if this gun really lives up to the hype of not being a good gun. Me, personally, I'm rooting for it. I love the idea of a $579 beater AK that shoots a cheap, common round and is reliable. And if it can get through the entire review without being a major pain in the ass, as a special thank you to all of you, we will post sample this gun and we will melt down the cheapest 223 AK in the country. Never seen anyone melt down an AK chambered in 223, let alone one at this price level. So, thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time. No explosion. <laughs>